Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, so I want to have a look at the new moon in Sagittarius, which is happening next week. Um, on November the 23rd. And I don't quite know what to expect because what I've been focusing on guys is the asteroids rather than the planets. And that's giving me a this underbelly of incoming deeply feminine energy. Um, so I'm gonna speak into it and pull some cards and see what comes through. So remember what I told you about the new moons, this Sag new moon will begin a run of five new moons all at one degree. So depending where you are in the world, um, uh, the moon won't go into Sag until overnight. So it's in late Scorpio between the 23rd and 24th. So, Forgive the gaps. Well, move with the gaps. There's a lot of gaps today. Um, yes, there's a lot of gaps. There's just a lot of gaps at the moment. Gaps in reality. It's like reality is becoming a construction site. And the gaps are the part that haven't quite yet been built. Okay, so I'm dancing with the gaps <laughs> today, but we have, <coughs> on the 23rd, <coughs> we will have uh, Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Venus. Gosh, I felt Venus come into Sagittarius yesterday. Oh, delicious energy, absolutely delicious energy. Uh, okay, incoming, rethinking our proverbs. Hmm. Rethinking our proverbs. Sexy is the new cool. Let's see what this brings. Right. Now, I haven't deeply written into the three asteroids that are uh, calling my attention towards them. Because, well, you know me, I'm not too fixed into archetypal energies. Um, we're in an epoch change. So I've just kind of grabbed the first principle of the asteroid, but do feel in and see what new you can bring to it. So we have an asteroid called Psyche in Scorpio, just moved into Scorpio. Well, it will move from Libra into Scorpio tomorrow the 18th. So on this new moon, we're gonna have Psyche activating Scorpio at two degrees that is deliciously sensitive, deliciously sensitive. So where Psyche is in your chart will show you um, the entry point to soul. Okay, so the, it's the place on the wheel where the energy will most support your coming home to self. And we have Hygieia in Sagittarius, 18 degrees. Oh, healing the Asclepian wound. Oh, this is tower energy. Okay. Okay. Let me read through these and then I'm gonna tell you what's coming in here. So Hygieia was the daughter of Asclepius. Um, 
which is all of you can healing. Um, it's that serpent energy. This is the mm. <laughs> I'm holding back. Okay. And now we're going to another asteroid called Sappho. Um, and Sappho is at 29 degrees of Leo. Uh, Sappho refines the Venus vibration and sensitizes individuals to the emo emotions associated with their sexuality. It's linked to sensuality, sexual expression through art. Sappho was a Greek poetess whose work evoked an awakening of intimate expression. Now, I only put the pieces together this morning. I wrote these notes early this morning and I, then I, as I was reflecting on them, I remembered I was workshopping in the liminal last night and I asked a question. I was with a group and I asked a question about, we speak so much about healing the wounded feminine, healing feminine sexuality do we speak as much about healing masculine sexuality and where is there a healthy expression of masculine sexuality that can be in men and that can be as uh, as an energy archetype within the body a pole and then I journeyed with that question and I went through layer after layer after layer of this matrix. And what I ended up with were the words, by the power vested in me and a religious scene, which I'm not gonna speak into here, it might be a video for another day. By the power vested in me, and then that became a whole thing. And it was only when I really, really stood back and remembered I'd asked a, a quite a simple question about where is there a healthy expression of masculine sexuality and landed at the end of the journey with, by the power vested in me, arise, Sir Knight, by the power vested in me by God. By the power vested in me, I now declare you husband and wife. By the power vested in me, I now baptize you, yada, yada. You see how we're filtering into religion. Okay, so we've got Psyche in Scorpio at two degrees. This is so sensitive, I almost dare not say it. That's how sensitive. It's the real kind of underbelly of sexual wounding. Yeah, okay, right. So I'm guided to lean heavily into the masculine. Because I asked the question with so much love. I asked the question with so much curiosity and health about what does a healthy expression of sexuality look like in a man? And check out the poetry of Sappho as well, S-A-P-P-H-O. It's gorgeous, it's dark, feminine, it's gorgeous. Okay. That's about it on the astro. That's it on the astro. I don't wanna do any more of that. Um, I don't wanna get in, uh -huh. Um. Right, so I'm just going to start with two cards and see where this goes. And we have weird is the new car, cool, and this is talking about Expressing outside the box that doesn't exist, by the way. Expressing outside of social convention. And what does that look like? And how does that feel? How does it feel 
to boldly express your uniqueness is the challenge, isn't it? So we've got the birthing Sagittarian energy to <laughs> reevaluate your proverbs. So that might be the mythology, your personal story, what you tell yourself about how far into the world you can reach, about how far in this world you can transcend, about what you may have to leave behind and the challenge of that to be able to stand in your truth and your autonomy and authenticity. A sharp end of the wedge stuff, this. And then, of course, Cap, Aqua, Pisces, Aries are the other four. So we're going from the philosopher to the first house of self at one degree on these consecutive new moons. It's, it's big birth. Big Bertha. <laughs> Set yourself free. Right. I just caught myself wanting to know what this means. And I don't know. And that's it. I may not know. I may get all the way through this reading. But I want the masculine to speak through, please. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. What is it you want to say about sexual expression for the masculine? So what I was just doing, I was just tuning into the energy that came out with whatever just happened there. And there was this temporary paralysis in the throat. Yeah. Learning. 22. Mr. Builder. Did we have this card the other day? This is the one that flew out. Hmm. And today what I'm noticing is this one up here. And I'm curious what this one up here is waiting for. Is it waiting to block? Is that the perception that it's going to get blocked before it can get to an open door, let's say? And this one <laughs> fell out transverse across the two cards I've already shown you face down. Well, well, well. So here we have an archer. <laughs> Coming in with companionship and the loyalty of dog. Mm. And where is he firing his arrow? Where are you firing your arrow? Solar plexus, tiger, will. Oh, so much love coming through with this card. What I'm feeling into is some kind of masculine desire to uplift the feminine to her highest expression. A 
and that can be the feminine within the man or without. It's almost like he, it's, it's like, it's, wow. There's a lot going on in the throat with the masculine. It's like he wants to support. It's like he wants to be strong and masculine and come from his center of will, but not for the me, me, me. And remember, we'll end up with the one degree new moon in Aries. So we'll have done the work by then. And what will he have built in that first degree of the first house of Aries? Will he still be in the me, me, me of instant sexual gratification? Or will he be in the companionship and the strength of a sacred relationship with himself or with his other? Mm. Wow. Look at this powerful energy coming through. So we've got ritual and we've got sacred coming through. And my throat does not feel good. It feels like there's a paralysis. Thank you, they're beautiful cards. Okay. Bear with me. I'm just going to bring this down into some kind of clarity with some surrender cards. Yeah, in the challenge of bringing a bold expression of self forward, the do you remember I was talking the other day about the abreaction? I'm seeing an awful lot of abreaction happening in the system. And for those that don't know, an abreaction is where the intellect can't catch up with the energetic healing that's happening within the body. And so it triggers the ego to come in and go, what the fuck? No, you can't. Because um, if you do, this will happen. So it does all that negative scenario planning and yada yada. None of it's true because, you know, if we're talking about learning on that sacred 22. We're talking about being the architect of every thought. And so the card is surrender negative thinking. And surrendering can be difficult. But people say, just let go of it. And, you know, it's hard. It's hard for people to just let go once they're caught in that mental loop. So you've got to find your way through the crack in the door and it might be just the narrowest gap to bring light to that negative thinking, to take the hand of the nervous ego whose job it is to maintain the status quo. And say, come on, we're going towards that light <laughs> so we can express ourselves boldly. So work with negative thinking to bring it out of its spiral lovingly and strong, you know, using the will using the will, loving words. We have an explosion. I'm gonna whiz, surrender worry, which is the same as negativity and anxiety. And this is interesting though. Surrender the drama, 
surrender the drama no matter how emotionally charged the situation remain calm and don't contribute do you remember i said in the last video this is the minutiae this is the presence of the moment and am i about to get entangled in something that isn't relevant to my path it's that moment to moment to transcend our old matrices codependency and entanglement and disabling behavior surrender do i want to contribute to this really interesting images And then we have these beauties, creativity, success, and the wisdom of the body, which I call soma. This is the somatic response. This is what will help us move out of our overactive intellectual mind that wants to figure everything out and go to the body. And how does this feel? Does it feel rapturous? Mm. Okay, let's go, I don't want that, let's go here and ask what is the specific message That's pretty self-explanatory. Hmm. Oh, that's a lovely message. That's a lovely message. This is about being given time. Here, we're giving you time to work through a five month cycle from Sag to Aries. That's lovely to get moony and lunar and crazy <laughs> so that you can find and elevate your inner weird, your inner strong, loving, passionate, supportive, masculine, which is what I'm seeing here. You know, we have bison and the sacred doorway. We have the archer with the dog seeking that companionship, loyalty. These are the more noble aspects of masculinity. Not the quick hit, quick fix by the power vested in me. That'd be more about how can I harness my highest will and put it to good use. You have time to the sea and we're still in Scorpio season so it's deliciously watery oh, uh, uh. <laughs> gonna go back to the narrow opening in the doorway and there was an underlying card that I didn't understand So you're going to have to work for it, is what this is saying. Discover the hard to find blessing. Again, this might be the dissolving of that instant gratification that has been given to masculinity generally. Generally. Well, well, well. So the specific message, I wanna build on this now, really pull it down, yep. It's, you are being given time, masculine. So this is the masculine within the self. 
and this is men. You are being given time to go into your waters, to get into your underbelly, your emotional response to sexual expression. To bring the emotion to sexual expression, because if it, if it isn't rapturous and passionate and scary, and if you're not harnessing your fire, you're coming from the mind. What else for the masculine? Yes. No. I don't want an ocean of cards. So keep the messages precise, please. Yes. Yes, what a beautiful message. Dignified strength. Oh, coming in on the feminine 13. Oh, my God. Oh, that's too gorgeous. Dignified strength. Hmm. Oh, how interesting. Men, how would you describe your love language? I have worked with too many gentlemen in my professional career, therapeutic professional career, who have spoken about women and to whom I have asked, did you tell her? <laughs> oh, well, no, you know. Did you tell her? <laughs> gentlemen, what is your love language? How do you communicate clearly? Because you're being challenged here. And you are being given time to clarify and refine and perfect. And again, I'm being constantly reminded here, let this speak to the inner masculine as well as gentlemen. Clarify your love language. If there's something that's in your heart, this is an invitation here. You hold the key to bringing that out. It's, come, it's gonna come through courage and will. You might not want to feel that. You might not, your ego might not want to run the chance of messing it up. Oh, look what's coming through now. Hmm. Right, it's gonna come in for you. It's, it's like, as soon as you point your arrow to developing your love language and the courage to speak it in the world. That door is going to open. And it will offer you balance. <laughs> and opportunities to nurture. Is Ceres in Libra? Where is Ceres? I need a magnifying glass to see this. Ceres on the 23rd is in Virgo. Yeah, where she belongs. Um, oh. 
And very feminine. Virgo is that very feminine seed planting earth mother kind of energy. So I'm going to recap when you point your arrow, when you focus where your arrow wants to go, who do I want to be in the world? As a, as a masculine, who do I want to be in the world? The door will open because the divine will will come through and it will create that Libra balance. Libra balance and bring structure to dignified strength. So it's going to come in. You've got to work for it. This is the work you've got to do. It's emotional clearing. So where I went this morning in the liminal was all the way back to the birth of, it was actually Catholicism that I was in, but you could say the birth of Christianity, anything really that repurposed the masculine from, I don't want to go into archetypes, I'm avoiding archetypes, but repurposed the masculine out of his love language into an abuse of power on a global scale. So it looks like we're healing that with Hygieia and Sappho coming in. We're talking about something so raw and visceral and sexually powerful. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. I'm going to go Sacred Rebels. Is there anything else I need to know about this reading? Is there a message from the feminine? Is there a message from the feminine to the masculine? This is literally a message from the cosmos. Twenty four six is that alchemical marriage? It is the cross of space and time. This is the feminine as the cosmos basically saying i'm guarding you as you rebirth i'm guarding you it feels absolutely gorgeous i could bask in this all day sorry <laughs> let me share it with you Okay, this is what's coming. This is what's coming. So all of these are underlying cards. So this is the underlying story to the rebirth of the masculine. That's the end. That's the beginning. Okay. Wow. It's a big journey. It's a big journey. And here I want to say, how would you respond if that cup came towards you? 
the energy that this is bringing through isn't so much about feeding ourselves, it's about allowing ourselves to be fed. And I think this is the story, to be guided by this story. I think that's what it's about, allowing the self to be fed. Shock of the new could be the heart opening. And what is this? Well, this is called feeling. It would be as simple as that. Retreading emotional steps, recoding the history that we've left behind. Wash clean, beautiful. Remember the to the sea card, this is echoing, the diving for light. This is bringing in the intuition. And as we reach out, because we tend to go up for higher dimensions, but it's all within us. We're actually reaching in and out simultaneously. Can the masculine kneel at the feet of the goddess, at the feet of the feminine, the sacred feminine? Some tough decisions. This can be allegiances to old beliefs, limited thinking, fatal thinking. This could be releasing relationships, jobs. Releasing allegiance to something that has previously defined you. So again, we're moving away from that egoic expression of success to a more passionate So this is coming, this is soul alignment. This is when the tower comes down and you realize, <laughs> I know I've said it and I will say it again and again and again, the deepest love you can ever experience is when you've dropped into the seat of your own soul. When you've come home at soul level to self, it is the deepest, most intimate relationship. Everything else is cheese, <laughs> cream, cherries, wonderful stuff but it allows the human to have a relationship free from need because the unsatiated hunger has been fed. But Chrissy, that sounds so big. Yeah, it is big. It's a huge journey. A little step there towards that crack in the door. As you begin to swim against the grain with your bare bottom in full view, full energy. This is coming back to the seat. Okay, this is almost a DNA strand. Uh, helix got helix energy. This this is coming to the very cause of the hold of darkness. Okay, <coughs> this is going to be happening in the collective. Okay, so whoever's watching, there is no task being set here that you must do this work on your own. It will happen in the collective. I strongly suggest you get swept up by it and harness the energies that are gonna be coming through. To untether from that original root to reveal, that's a clear reflection. No karmic history, no layer after layer after layer of karmic history overshadowing us and making us this and making us that. It's clarity, that'd be quite an exciting five months. 
So uh, that's a big underlying story there. Um, that's a big underlying story. So masculine is coming back to the table. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how can we wrap this up? Yeah, I'm gonna go up again, because that's up. <laughs> okay. Let's have a peek at which energies are gonna help us through now to Aries, I know. Wow, I've never drawn this card before. So you know all the throat stuff at the start of the video. This is voice activation. Oh, wow. It's the language of love. It's 1111, and I just said the words language of love. That might be the name for the video. Love language, what is your love language? Seraphim. Voice activation, angelic attunement, divine support. We are divinely supported. See, healing the DNA. Where are the others? Okay. Third eye activation. This is coming in on that 11 energy. Wow. Home, remembering home, soul family. And that becomes an inevitability. You know, when we, we, be, when we come into alignment with ourself, with our essence, our soul essence and our heart's truth, just kind of happens. You come into alignment, align this, and that will come into alignment with you. Yeah, interconnectedness, synchronicity. Wow. That's stunning. All right. Let's wrap this up. And I'm going to go to these little beauties. We have a final message. Let's have two final messages. One from the masculine and one from the feminine. Masculine. How are you feeling about all this? Feminine. How are you feeling about all this? Masculine, how are you feeling about all this? That. Feminine, how are you feeling about all this? change. 
Mm. That's beautiful. Underlying card. Freedom. I've forgotten already what I was going to call this card. Love, uh, yeah, love language. Thank you. Okay, I'm Oski. Um, thank you for being here. It's lovely to see you. I wish you a beautiful weekend or any kind of weekend that suits you best. And I'll see you again next week. Okay, take good care. Lots of love. Bye.